And thank you for joining us. I have to say that we still have cash out. And today is a mega bonanza. And so certainly because we have a mega jackpot, it also means that you have to choose option eight. And I'm quickly trying to do that. I've already uh, had a, a stake of 10 already. And um, with 10 Ghana CD. So let me see. Star 439 hash. All right. Please bear with me. Eh, so that we'll be able to mega bonanza, mega bonanza, mega bonanza. So when you dial, you find option eight. It's down there. So please choose it quickly, 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 quickly. You, okay, so it gives you the minimum tickets that you have to stake as 10. I choose 10. I'll do another 10 again. It's giving me the prompt, and then I've entered my PIN number, and I'm also approving it. So as, as many times as you can, please. We want to make sure that we give 5,000 Ghana cities to our winners today. 5,000 Ghana cities. Usually we'll be doing some thousand and some things. Please, let's make sure that we're able to do it as, quick, as quickly as possible. Let's also be part of this. Because, you know, it's a Friday. We have to usher the weekend in a grand style and certainly end our discussions well. And we're hoping that by the close of everything we're talking about, when we do the first draw, certainly um, we will be part of a big bonanza. So we're just showing you what the dashboard is, how you can also, I can see zero two four. I think it looks like my number, but it looks like my number, zero two four, zero two four. It looks like my number. <laughs> Charlie, make no do the draw. I beg you, come, come, come to me, come to me. Well, certainly. So let me just introduce our guest for the morning. I, I, I um, How are you? Good, good to have you again. Same All right. So today I'll give you the honors of introducing yourself quickly. My name is Michael Safo Kantan. Fantastic. Yeah, I represent the Movement for Change. Movement for Change. Yeah. How's Alan? Very well. Great. He's in good spirit. Yeah. He's touring the country, selling his message mm. to the people of Ghana. All right. Charlie, this thing you are saying, it's making MPP shake. Also. So I have. Yeah, like, they I have don't a, have a message. They don't so have a message. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny when when they go about trying to attack our campaign, you uh, know. Saying this is supporting us. I, I don't know where they get all that. All right. Lawyer Fakwa is here. And then also, uh, Lawyer Pamijanto, how are you, sir? I'm, I'm well. <laughs> Lawyer Amaleba, the man in green. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. All right. Yeah, now, let's green. give you a certain recollection. We'll take you back to 2020. We had Professor Aaron Michael Quay in, in <laughs> that ruling. That. Green in blue. relation to the Formina Member of Parliament, <laughs> and then we'll transition green, to Alban Bagwin, current yeah. state, and then yeah. we're going to give you yeah. Afenio yeah. Markin's yeah. insights. Yeah. We'll, we'll begin the discussion and wrap up. How do we create consensus with a stalemate in Parliament? Star 439 hash. Cash out. Furthermore, after 7 December 2020, when Parliament is still in session till 7 January 2021, how does an MP move as an elected independent MP and at the same time an MPP MP if he should win the election? This lacuna of a ridiculous situation is not what is anticipated under the 1992 constitution. In the circumstances, Parliament has determined that the conduct of Honorable Andrew Amoko Siamma amounts to vacating his seat in Parliament. According, we will bring this to the notice of the Electoral Commission for the necessary action to be taken in accordance with the law. Signed, the Speaker. Honorable Members, we shall now suspend sitting. Honorable Members, it is important to point out that the Speaker is called upon by the Standing Orders of Parliament particularly Order 18, to inform the House of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under Clause 1B to E, G and H of Article 97 of the Constitution. Accordingly, I proceed to inform the House that by the notification of the polls, the following members of parliament have by their actions vacated their seats in parliament. The members are Honorable Peter Yao Kwachi Aka, NDC MP for Amenfi Central in the Western Region, now referred to as an independent parliamentary candidate for the same constituency. Two, 
Honorable Andrew Amwako Asiyama, independent member for former constituency in Ashanti region, now referred to as MPP parliamentary candidate for the constituency. Three, Honorable Kojo Asante, MPP MP for Suhum in the Eastern Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. And finally, Honorable Cynthia Mamile Morrison, MPP MP for Aguna West constituency in the Central Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. These MPs cannot be allowed by law and my good self to continue to pretend to be representing people that they don't believe in and they don't have any loyalty for in this house any longer. The house is accordingly so informed. Honorable members, I thank you for your patience and attention. MPP is for peace. MPP is for peace. MPP is for peace. We will not allow anybody to disturb the peace of the country. It is a notorious fact that we remain the majority caucus of this parliament. You, the All right. So, Leafakwa, how do we find some consensus on the subject? <coughs> well, let me say a very good morning to yourself and to um, my senior <coughs> learned brothers on this platform. And to uh, Safo, and also extend the gifts of His Excellency, the Vice President, who is also the President in waiting of the Republic of Ghana. I believe on the seventh of December, the Ghanaian people will graciously honour him by voting him as the president elect of the Republic of Ghana. <coughs> Roland, on the issue of the Buhaha in Ghana's parliament, it all boils down to invasion of the territories of Adet. And in as much as we have the constitutional democracy, <coughs> Article 1-2 of the Constitution prescribes that the constitution of Ghana is the supreme law of the land. So in Ghana, we don't practice the Westminster system whereby they have parliamentary supremacy. But in Ghana, we have constitutional supremacy. And if you listen to the commentaries from parliament, it comes to suggest that there is an attack on the supremacy of parliament. And that has brought us where we are today. When you look at Article 132 of the Constitution, it clearly states that when a question of constitutional interpretation arises in any matter other than uh, uh, in any court other than the Supreme Court, the lower court must stay proceedings and refer the question of constitutional interpretation to the Supreme Court. <coughs> Because that is the exclusive original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court under Article 131. Parliament has its own mandate. And as far as um, the supremacy of the Constitution is concerned, even in the recent case of Justice Abulai versus Attorney General, the Supreme Court per uh, Kulindi JSC clearly stated and uh, clearly reaffirmed in that uh, matter the supremacy of the Constitution and not Parliament. So, when this matter was brought, when the, whether it was a motion or whatsoever, was filed on the floor of Parliament for the determination by the Speaker whether to declare some seat vacant or not, some rival interpretations were ascribed to Article 97, 1G and H. And the current position of the law in ex parte Zaneto is that once Per Justice Atuguba JSC, as he then was, that once rival meanings are ascribed to a provision of the Constitution, you must stay and refer the question of constitutional interpretation to the Supreme Court. So, invariably, we were expecting that, insofar as the minority caucus in Parliament ascribed a particular 
interpretation to uh, a provision under Article 97 1G and H to mean that as far as the four members of parliament, there are four. I.e. Mr. Uh, Honorable Kwatiaka of Amenfi Central on the ticket of the end is now filing to contest the 2024 elections intending to remain in, in the in future parliament. That's the ninth parliament. That's an independent member of parliament for Amenfi Central. Honorable Esiama, independent member for Formina, intending to remain in parliament on the ticket of the new patriotic party for the ninth parliament and not for the eighth parliament. Uh, Honorable Cynthia Mamley Morrison of Aguna West, intending to remain in the ninth parliament as an independent member, but not on the ticket of the new patriotic party, and have not said notice that they have divorced their relationship with the caucus in which they belong to, clearly amounted to um, constitutional interpretation, where light the forum should have been the Supreme Court. But Speaker Baben went ahead, arrogated to himself the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court under Article 131, to interpret that to mean that as far as they have declared their intention and notice of uh, proofs have been published, it clearly amounts to uh, cross capitation of which they, are, they, they can no longer remain in parliament as members of the age parliament. Again, Speaker Babin arrogated to himself the jurisdiction of the High Court and Article 91A to declare those seats vacant and now came to his armchair as Speaker of Parliament under Order 18 of the Standing Orders of Parliament 2023 to inform Parliament or to notify Parliament as to the vacancy of the four seats in Parliament. Clearly, he usurped the powers of some bodies, some constitutional bodies, of which the Constitution of the Republic has granted them those powers to, uh, uh, to perform those, those various tasks. Roland, anyone that says that uh, the Right Honorable Aaron Michael Quay's ruling is clearly similar to what is happening today, and that uh, Speaker Babin has done no wrong, clearly does not understand the jurisdiction of the High Court under Article 99 a it is clearly the exclusive domain of the High Court to determine parliamentary membership and to declare parliamentary seat vacant. And no other body has that power except the High Court of the Republic. You see? So you're, so you're saying Professor Michael Quay aired? He, he completely aired. And the, and, and the MPP and the caucus in the House at the time went along with him? He aired. Now I'm once, asking you a question. No, once, once it affected the right of Honorable Esiama, he had a right in law to have invoked the, uh, the jurisdiction of the High Court to challenge the decision of the, uh, the right honorable speaker, Aaron Michael Quay. But he gave out his right and decided to contest and win his seat back, which clearly the people of Formina rewarded him back with that seat. And he's a member of this parliament. Uh, Fakwa, the, the position or the ruling of Michael Quay, was it not what the MPP had intended when they decided to invoke their own constitution. You see, when, no matter what, on 13th October, Mr. John Boyle, then General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party, wrote to Parliament, informing Parliament of that position, that uh, Honorable Osiama has been dismissed as a member of the New Patriotic Party for declaring to go independent. That is, that's a notorious fact. In that standing orders of parliament, the standing orders of parliament. What was the intention? Was, what was the intention of the framers of the party's constitution? I'm coming. I'll get there. Of of I'm saying coming. automatically once you make that announcement and take the step, you are no more a member of the party, and as a result of that, you, you are free to go and stand as independent or otherwise. I'll, I'll, I'll answer that question. Let me let me let me let me put our viewers to note it that in the in the year 2000 standing orders of parliament which was repealed in 2023, under the same Order 18, gave the Speaker of Parliament powers to declare parliamentary seats vacant. So, Speaker, okay. And that provision was inconsistent with a provision of the Constitution at Article 99 one day, which, which, which grants the jurisdiction in terms of... No, the don't, don't agree to 2000. I, I, I asked a specific no, question. I'm coming there. I'm, no, I'm coming to your and question. I'm, and I'm, I'm addressing your question, so give me the opportunity to address your question. It's a fantastic question. Honorable Siama is an independent member of parliament. Yes or no? Yes. No, I'm saying, uh, I, and the question relates to the new patriotic party. Yes. I'm saying mm -hmm. that in your constitution, mm -hmm. 
is there in tandem. And if you listen to all the audios and the interviews that, as the chief scribe of the MPP at the time, there were quotations of this same Article 97. And I'm saying that the rationale, the intention at the time, and still, was to get the Member of Parliament out of Parliament because he didn't represent the MPP. Is that not the case? You see... Don't, don't you see me. I'm asking you a no, specific I'm, question. I'm, I'm asking you a question. You see, when the same constitution also tells you that if you go independent and you want to rejoin the party, you apply to the party and the party then accepts your nomination. And once you rejoin the party, you have two years to say before you can contest for any position within the party. So, since, since when they don't know about Siamma joined the party to be contested on the kit of the New Patriotic Party. So it tells you that clearly that is the domain of the New Patriotic Party. And our, 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 our party and our regulations and our rules have ways to cater for these things. It's an internal affair. And so far, it is not inconsistent with the parent constitution, the Supreme, uh, the constitution of the... Why then, was, why then was the MPP That's quoting it. Article 97 then to back the argument based on the decisions that they had taken? Their own constitution had been evoked. When once they did that invocation, they also back it with the national constitution in tandem. And I'm asking you, what was... What that was the understanding of the NPP then. But now, mm -hmm. that was the understanding. And nobody contested the <coughs> position of the new patriotic party. Did anybody contest the position of the new patriotic party? Who is contesting your position now? No. No, did anybody... Is it not the same MPP? No. I'm asking, did anybody contest the position of the new patriotic party then? They don't know who was affected by that decision. Contest. Who is contesting the position now? Now we have all realized that you are Article who? 99. I am one of the I, I am one of them. Is it if you are not part, no, I, I am one of them. So if you are not part of, of, of the people that have realized that, in terms of declaration of parliamentary seats okay. vacant, it is only the jurisdiction, it is only I, the high court that we, has jurisdiction to declare that. parliamentary okay, seat okay, vacant. Please end for me. So certainly, once the high court has not declared any seat vacant, the speaker has no mandate to um, as it were to notify or to inform parliament as to the vacancy of seats. Because, one, no one has died that it is notorious for all of us to know that the person has passed on. And as a result of he or she passing on, the seat is vacant. No one has formally resigned like Honorable Wayosini, then belonging to the NDC caucus, resigned as a member of the NDC, my, uh, the, the, the NDC caucus to join the new patriotic party, where like the speaker triggered Article 97.1G, uh, and inform, proceeded to inform um, so you're saying that the speaker doesn't have the right to... He doesn't. He okay. didn't have the right. Uh, 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 once you don't have that right, and uh, you are against uh, yourself that right. Uh, Amali, but you've been monitoring of, proceedings. Uh, uh, impasse that we are, okay. we are all the, the last week we were here, we, we didn't have the impasse of anybody going to court for any order. And now the Supreme Court has come with witness. Uh, so the question then to deal with this morning was to look at how do we create consensus to reconvene Parliament, to look at the other urgent matters before them. But there are substantive issues that have to... What, what are your own observations in the first place, so far? Let me start by saying good morning to your viewers. My colleague, uh, Efuakwa, mentioned that Ghanaians should vote for Mahmoud Baumia. I want to tell him on this program that Ghanaians, having been taken through this harsh economic situation, are not fools to repeat their suffering. A vote for Baumia is a vote for Ghanaians to repeat their suffering. Now, I have heard people say that it is only the Supreme Court that can interpret the Constitution. It's a lie. The Constitution regulates our lives, our daily lives. And indeed, each day that we go about our activities, we interpret the Constitution. So it's not only the Supreme Court. The only time that it is the preserve of the Supreme Court to interpret the Constitution is, 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 is when there are rival interpretations. So let people know. I've heard this bandit around. So let the matter end today. It is only when there's a rival interpretation. And that's why the Constitution is written in plain English. You notice that the, the language of the Constitution is not legalese. Have you noticed that? Because it's meant for all of us. 
and we are to interpret this constitution as we go about our activities. Mm. So let's assume that even here, your board members are meeting. They call your board, your, 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 the lawyer for your company, to come and interpret a provision of the constitution. Then the lawyer says that, board members, wait, oh, let me carry the constitution to the Supreme Court, and then they'll give it, and I'll come and give it to you. Does it make sense? So I'm telling people who are always saying that it is all the Supreme Court. Today, let it end. Now, you ask a question. That what is the way forward? You, 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 the, the word you used was consensus. Is it consensus. And he's gone all over. He has not provided any consensus. What's the way forward? He has not answered that question. But let me follow him to where he has gone to. <laughs> let me follow him there. Article 97, G and H. And this provision has been read. It's notorious. Everybody knows it. I'm not going to read it. Even Michael Quay also quoted it in that instance. Exactly. Mm. Now, the MPP should tell me and viewers where this provision talks about the future. Which Look at the wedding and tell me which of the words here talks about the future. Now, when they say that the Supreme Court has the exclusive jurisdiction to interpret the Constitution, it is not when people on their own decide to come out with a convoluted argument and say that that is interp an interpretative issue. Are you listening to me? Mm. These are plain words. So, when they say the Constitution should be interpreted by the, uh, the uh, Supreme Court, it doesn't mean that you, Roland, sitting in your house and then conjure an interpretative issue and say that the Supreme Court should now interpret it. Okay. And so, per this constitution, and Article 97, G and H, there is no interpretative issue at all. There's no confusion. There's no confusion. Give this to an, a, a, a junior high school child, and he will read and interpret it for you. Okay, so this is why... There's no confusion. He says that... A member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament in G if he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent member or if he was elected a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party. Full stop. Now, and the MPP constitution... No, 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 I'm not even going there yet. Okay. If he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of election to parliament, full stop there. These people that we are talking about, they've left. Has this caught them or not? Yeah, yeah. they've left. So sometimes when the MPP is talking, I, 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 I don't know. But let me uh, suppress my anger, isn't it? So that's the first one. Two. To join another party or seek to remain in parliament as an independent member. Has this caught them again or not? What is this? What is this about this MPP people? Sometimes eh, I, I wish we could just carve out some place for them and say that's their country. Oh, what do you mean by that? They are, you see, the way they behave. You catch them here, they do this. You catch them there, they do this. What is this? This provision, which is in black and white, does it lend itself to any interpretation? Does it? Where is the future here? Which, word, which of the words here talks about future? Synonyms. Let's go to English. Synonyms. Maybe which, they'll... which word here talks about future? Which word here talks about future? So, you see... Let me exercise restraint and we'll do my argument because I didn't seek to remain in this parliament. I didn't seek to remain in, in the in the next parliament. parliament. Look, 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 stop, stop what you are doing. When you were talking, I was not happy. 
but I discipline myself. Okay, go ahead. Discipline yourself. You may not like what I'm saying. Now, you come up with your own convoluted interpretation and say, let's go to the Supreme Court. Article 115 of the Constitution is very clear on how Parliament conducts its business and whether Parliament's business is open for any court action. It's clear. 115, read it. Well, if I read it, then people say that I'm putting words. 115, there shall be freedom of speech, debates, and proceedings in Parliament, and that freedom shall not be impeached or questioned in any court or place out of Parliament. So it is this provision that the and majority NDC is, is hanging on to and thinks that the Supreme Court has no business in this matter. It is this provision. Now, having dealt with that, those matters, let me deal with consensus. consensus. Because right now there's a stalemate, but Parliament is needed back. Mm. There is. We, we, ha we have to reconvene Parliament. There is. First and foremost, as an expert in conflict resolution, what you need to do first is whether the two parties are amenable to settlement. Because you can't bring parties to the negotiation table when they themselves are not in agreement. Particularly when they have entrenched positions. Do you see the positions as entrenched? And why? They are entrenched, but both sides know he has failed to answer those questions. So I'm now teaching him how to answer questions. Both sides know. Both sides know that the country must move forward. Isn't it? Isn't it? Both sides know that the country must move forward. Now, if you are coming to a negotiating table, mm -hmm. you don't come with an entrenched position. You must be ready to give and take. You must lose some. You must take some. Where are the contentions? The contentions are in two areas. One, who leads parliament and thereby doing government business? And two, whose number in parliament is the largest? So, so, who is majority in parliament? And then who is the one who will lead government business? What will government do if the majority goes to the NDC? That's the problem now. Okay. So anybody who is going into this matter must be ready to look at the positions of the parties, mm. their interests, mm. and their needs. Three, three areas. You, you, you've, you've brought a very important thing up. The Supreme Court gave an order. Mm -hmm. So once the Supreme Court has given an order, mm -hmm. we haven't heard a response from the Speaker. Mm -hmm. So my assumption is once the Supreme Court is given or has given an order, it means that everything returns to basics. No, that's another area. Let me use my knowledge of the law to educate people. Those who were saying that yesterday, only yesterday they went, two days ago they went yes, to Parliament. Yes. Because that, that's, I'm thinking. Those who were saying that the NDC majority should have moved away and go to the left-hand side of Mr. Speaker because the Supreme Court ruling subsists, got it all wrong. They went to the Supreme Court on Friday. Mm. Friday to Tuesday is how many days? Uh, three, four days? Four days. Four days. So when such orders are made, mm. Eh, mm. the status quo remains for the next seven days. Oh, so? Yes, seven days. Weekends. The seven days does not include weekends. The, when you are recording time. So from Friday, then we'll come on Monday, Tuesday, so, Wednesday, Thursday, yes. Thursday, Tuesday. Seven and days. And seven then days. the next seven days will be um, Tuesday, the next Tuesday. Uh -huh. So seven days period, the status quo remains. Then the judgment or the ruling will take effect. So after Tuesday? After seven days. So where the majority in Parliament on that day against their conduct, was their conduct against the Supreme Court? The answer is no. 
because there's a period of there's a, a period of uh, duration where the status quo remains the same. So that is an indication for those who think that the majority in, in Tuesday's sitting shouldn't have sat at where they are. Mm. They also got it wrong. Right. Uh, Adams, uh, uh, Andy Adams says you are boiling. So drink water. <laughs> so what do you make of all this? Because at the end of the day, let's come to the substantive. We on the civil side are looking at... Uh, Oh, at consensus. Yeah. Because Parliament needs to go, we, we have some business to deal with. Yeah. Thank you, Roland. Um, good morning to uh, the ordinary Ghanaians. And then um, I was standing for them today. Good morning to Dafa Franto. And I was so excited to see New Day Yellow with a monarch butterfly. Hallelujah. Ooh, ooh. Um, this has always been done for your party. Well, yeah. it, of course, but then so it, it excites me that when you know, the spirit of... When this <laughs> montage was created... <laughs> <with this. laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm making this a very This was created before um, the movement for was, it, was incorporated. Essentially, so the, the fact of the matter is that the spirit of the movement, which wants to bring about a new day, as symbolized by the monarch butterfly it's in this studio now it's in the making of this program roland why do we have a situation where lawyers are taking this uh, development and this country hostage i as a development worker i'm at a loss that within a month to a major election that is going to determine the fate that is going to be determining whether we are going to endorse the status quo that has led to our impoverishment in the last 32 years, or we are going to choose a man like Alan Tremate, who has presented a solid blueprint to lead us out of the mess we find ourselves. We are not probing these issues a month into election, and here we are with the usual, you know, mischief of lawyers. We are saddled with um, a situation where people know what the constitution says. They, it has worked for them from the videos you played in the Michael K case. And yet, they are insisting no. Even though it worked for us, we are trying to change it because this time around, it, it, it renders us disadvantaged. That's a problem. That, that level of um, mischief cannot be tolerated, especially at a time where we are at a crossroads. We are supposed to win our country off the tentacles of this constant revisiting of IMF um, um, regulations and all that. And it calls for probing into the options we have, probing into the, the kind of plans, the policies they are proposing to choose which one works for us. It is time for us to assess the competence, the vision, the, the integrity of these guys who present themselves as leaders for us. And here we are, you know, caught in this um, paralysis of legal tassels. It, it doesn't help us as a people seeking to develop out of the current um, economic hardship we find ourselves. How do we find the consensus? And I'm really concerned. The consensus is really simple. Like I said, it has, we are here because there's this toxic adversarial system where MPP wins and it's only MPP. NDC wins and it's only MPP controlling the affairs of the state. And so there's this strive for, you know, dominance. There's a strive for majority position in parliament so they can control all the affairs and business of the day. And that's why we are here. That's why we are having people trying to you know, redefine the constitution, even when there's a straightforward um, definition and interpretation. The, f the fact of the matter is, until we do away with this NPP and DC duopoly that has created this toxic divide, we are not going anywhere as a country. And that is what is enshrined in Alan's policies and his message to Ghanaians, that we need to come together, create a united people behind a single vision, a single development plan to move this country forward. It has happened in China. For long, they were a communist state, you know, strictly communist. But now, what is happening? They've been able to move their country into a communist socialist state, and it's the second largest economy in the world. Because there were compromises. People were able to 
see that this is the right path and then they rally behind it. How do we find the compromise? The compromise starts with leadership. We need to set aside this MPP and DC Diopoli. Bring Alan Chermatin, who has come out of the Diopoli and has said, look, Ghanaians, we've been doing things the wrong way for the past 32 years. I don't now, understand. You mean Alan agreed to what you are criticizing, he was but all in, of a sudden became he, a believer? When did he become it's a believer? all of a sudden. You know, all he's been doing with his life outside of Ghana, within politics and all that, suggests to the fact that the man is on a transformational agenda. In fact, his, his thesis as at 1973-74 was on Ghana's transformation. And I believe he is the next Kwame Nkrumah we are yet to have, actually. Look at what he's done in government. He does things that go beyond parties. He does things, even as minister, his policies like bringing home this, the giant automobile industries, his policies like working to bring home the intercontinental free trade area, these are all encompassing policies and programs that seek to move our country beyond partisan considerations. It is very essential we, we, we set aside this MPP NDC regime, bring Alan Chermatin and his vision to unite us. That's the only way we can build consensus. If we continue to choose a, a, a regime, a leadership regime, where people, people's uh, affiliation to a party becomes their competence criteria, then we have a problem. It should be by merit. It should be, if you are choosing lawyer Farqa to head a position in government, it should be because lawyer Farqa is tried and tested. He has the proven track record to deliver. It's not because he is MPP or NDC, and so we should give him, you know, the all-important position to take decisions that affect all of us Ghanaians. Then we have a problem, and that's why we are here. Let's build consensus by bringing an independent candidate, Alan Chemate, to work with all these, you know, fielding parties, unite us behind a national development plan. I was happy lawyer Maliba said, Look, we all agree that we have to move our country forward. If that becomes the, the fulcrum around which we all revolve, it's so simple to choose a leader who, who has actually made that his number one vision to unite the country around the National Development Plan. Otherwise, we are not going nowhere, honestly. Thank you. Um, we are at a stale bit. Now, we are being told that we have to come back to Parliament. What do you think has been wrong with the posture that has been taken by the individuals that you witness, whether in the chamber, whether, I don't have to mention that, you know them already, the individuals who were either talking back at the speaker, or making pronouncement posts, and the entrenched positions they took, that has, uh, th that has led us here. And how do we find consensus from that point? Individuals. Good morning to our viewers. Good morning individuals. They are key individuals. Key I just, I just mentioned. <laughs> Let's be specific. You can't just generalize. Yeah. Let me tell my brother from, uh, what do you call it? Uh, movement, for movement for Change. Once we see your action, that is when you compare someone to Koma. Apart from that, you cannot compare. <laughs> All right. So we shouldn't even go down that line. Look, let me take it from the point, the, the, the point where uh, AB made in terms of interpretation. Mm. The High Court can t interpret the Constitution, Court of Appeal can, Parliament can, oh. and also Council of States yes. can interpret mm -hmm. the Constitution. Now, I think uh, when you take 97, Article 97, Article 99, Article 110, Article 130, mm. there are lacunas in there that need to be looked at. That's why some of us continuously say we should go back and look at the 998 pages of the constitutional review and see how best we can align this constitution. Number three. Uh, let me ask you a question. The question is that the speaker did not have the power to do what? To declare vacancies. That is the argument. The, the argument being made. 
Because Okwe had when you you know, when you played Michael Okwe, mm. there was a word in there mm. that he used that Babin also used. And what's that word? Michael Okwe said by his conduct. You heard it. Babin also said right. by his action. What's the difference? Same. Just by, a synonym. What's the action. difference? Yeah, yes, by their actions. Different. Well, it's the same thing. It's different. What's different? Look, by their conduct, ahead. by their actions. It's different. Huh? His conduct is that he did what? He stood as a, uh, 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 in, uh, what do you call it? Independent. Independent. Made a decision. By their actions show that mm. they have crossed carpet. Mm. So what's the difference? Number two, and maybe around the table, you'll be able to Deduce. advise me. <laughs> advise me. Don't qualify. When, <laughs> when Ajua Safo eh, abs absconded from her seat for how many days? Absconded? Well, how should I put it? Okay, absent. didn't attend parliament, was for absent for more than 15 days. Who was supposed to declare her seat vacant? Is it the speaker? What's the difference? What is the difference? Tell me, somebody, somebody should tell me. What is the difference? So you're saying so from, so from, question from the arguments, the speaker from, the powers exactly, or not. from the arguments they are making, the speaker doesn't have the, the, the power to declare vacant. At just a first case, did he have to go back to 99? Did he have to go back to the Supreme Court for interpretation? Or even 97? Or 97? There is an issue of conduct. Uh -huh. yeah. 97? And in 97, it says, shall mandatory. And that was what that is what the speaker the speaker was using on the adjuster first case tell me what's the difference between the two when we've already i've already stated the institutions that can also interpret but yes yes the the the, the supreme court can give final interpretation of the constitution so what are we talking about what are we talking about? Look, it, it, we have to be very, very careful. Eh? We have to be careful? Yes, we have Why? to be very careful. And parliamentarians have to be very, very careful and not take Ghanaians for granted. They should look at the 2020 elections of parliament, see what happened. Ghanaians are watching. They are watching the different parl uh, parliamentarians who are saying A, B, C, D, E. Come election day, eh? if Ghanaians decide that hey, we are going to give one party absolute uh, majority and then vote for another party for president, that is where you will see the difficulties that we have. Now, I come to consensus. Let me tell you something, uh, um, Roland. The only consensus that that should sway everybody including the speaker including parliamentarians and including Ghanaians, is the threat of elections what do i mean explain yeah. what do i mean mm -hmm. the electoral commission have they brought in their ci that would govern the elections it has a 21 day to cure yeah. before it becomes uh, law has it happened isn't time ticking and isn't it a threat to our elections going forward as the time draws near we are 44 days to elections so really i would plead because of elections alone i would plead with the speaker please whatever the case is let's put this case aside in fact if the Supreme Court may, and I'm not in the Supreme Court, they can stay their verdict. Hmm? Get Parliament back because of the elections. And look at particular bills that need to be passed. And do you notice something? In the, 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 the bills that the MPP are now using to recall Parliament, do you realize LI-264... 2642 is not part of it. The mining. The mining is not part the, of my, it. My name 
is, in forest with is not part of it. What did the president say to organize Liba? What did the president say to organize Liba? It's not part of it. It's already with Parliament. It's, it's already what? It's already with Parliament. Is it part of the bills that they were going to withdraw? Well, speaker should call Parliament well, for Parliament. Well, I'm saying, I'm saying, no, wait, wait, please, 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 that you've cited. please, please. I'm saying the list of bills that they in are that trying memo. to force Parliament to come back. Is it part of it? It's not. It's not. So, for me, the only consensus I can see, for me, is on the elections. We cannot afford to, 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 to let this, this particular issue that has personal interest in there. Why do you, oh, you keep saying uh, personal interest? You keep using the phrase personal interest. Oh, isn't it the country that we are, we are ruling? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't the country come first? Shouldn't parliamentarians say, okay, we do not agree with what has happened. However, we have elections coming up. If we are not careful, the, the actions might stay these elections. For whatever the case is, whatever the challenge is, let's go back. Who sits left, who sits right? Look, look, look. Ru, let me ask you a question. So that's it. The urgent matters. The yes, allies yes. are part, yeah. let, let me ask you a question. If it so happened that they were able to get these parliamentarians out, could they run a by-election? The law states that by-election should be held six months before an election. How many days? Could they have? So, the NDC... I don't about law is law. The, uh, the, yeah, I'm saying that they won't be able to run the by-election. Mm -hmm. Yes. They won't so be able to run. They are even, not, they are even yes. not entitled yes. to run it. So, because that's what so the law, the law my, says that mine, um, mine, it has to be three months. Yes, three months. Mine is that it be six months, eh? three months, NDC... You've made your point. You've made your point. You've argued your point. You think it's the fault of the NDC? Right? No, no. I'm not saying it's the fault. So what are you saying? I'm saying that it was Haruna who brought this situation up, isn't it? It came from the opposition. It didn't come from the major, uh, the party in power. It came from them. The majority. You've made your majority. point. You've made your point. Everybody understands your point. Ideally, who sh who sh who who was wh was the NDC right? The individuals like Haruna and then the leader, according to the law. Okay, were they right? According to the law, they were right. Ninety-seven. All right. According to the law. Uh, let, and and uh, let 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 okay, let, 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 let me finish. Mm -hmm. I think I think it is important for all of us to bring the country first. All this up and down, up and down is not helping anybody. And the people who are coming back to vote for you are caught in the middle. Mm. Parliamentarians, right. executive, judiciary, right. think of Ghana first la, 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 before la, you la, take Papa, the, whatever a, action you want to take. No, 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 wait. A, uh, just keep your submissions on. You add it. If the MPP had a majority of, let's say, 45, 145, do you think that this would have been a problem? I mean, the MPP would have opposed their their own their 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 own advocacy or position. It is it is it is not to say the MPP is no no. It's just a question, own. yes or no. You, no, you can is, say that it is not that the MPP is canvassing its own uh, position on the subject matter. No, I'm not that saying that. What, that. I'm saying what, that uh, if the MP, uh, I'm asking you a specific mm, question. Sure. Hypothetically, if the MPP had, let's say, 145 seats in Parliament, and so had a very extensive majority, so to speak, and um, the NDC members, as we have it, or the NDC side, bring, br bring this up, in your own sincerest opinion, do you think this would have been a problem? We would have seen all this. Oh, certainly, yes. Once it's a constitutional democracy and our jurisprudence is still developing, certainly any member, any citizen of Ghana would have gone to the Supreme Court to have contested the decision under Article 97. Uh, certainly, certainly. Even so, myself, I would so, have taken the steps. So, 2020, what happened? Mm -hmm. that, that even the, the MPP the itself that, didn't go to that, court to contest its own the fact that nobody, position. The fact that nobody contested the decision of the Speaker, or the decision of Parliament, the seventh Parliament, in 2020, okay. in any court, right. does not amount, does not a stop mm. any citizen from going ahead to How do we find consensus? Well, you see, I'm right. coming. There has been some erroneous impression created on this platform. And my lender senior, with respect to him, made some assumptions that he's teaching me. Let me state clearly that he stated that um, 
it is not only the Supreme Court that interprets their constitution and other citizens interpret their constitution in that lies. It is a fast proposition and nobody should say that. Go under Article 131. That's the exclusive original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court in terms of the enforcement and interpretation of the constitution. So let us know this on this platform. Please, uh, let's have civility, please. Let's have civility. In terms of Article 131, that is that is my authority. He never contested Article no. 130. He oh. said, and he stated again. He's saying that, that the as we work with the Constitution, the constitution every day as Ghanaians, is, no, you see, we interpret the Constitution. He's, and he's, and he's talking about the literal But we are talking about rival interpretation being ascribed oh. to a provision of the Constitution. Please go ahead. So, go ahead. certainly Let's nobody nobody can say that uh, 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 everything we interpret is not the Supreme Court that interprets the Constitution anyway. Hey, hey, hey. Again, again. <laughs> He said that the constitution is written in English and it is in ordinary words and it is clear. I think he has sort of averted his mind on what the, the Supreme Court stated through uh, Dateba in Nigerian versus Attorney General. Where, let me read a provision to you so that it settles that matter. So that we don't repeat that on this platform again. Because this is, an, uh, this is a big platform, a national platform, where people are taking information from us. You see, in Nigerian versus Attorney General, uh, Justice Dateba stated that the fact that a country had a written constitution did not mean that only its letter might be interpreted. The court had a responsibility for distilling the spirit of the constitution from its underlying philosophy, core values, basic structure, the history and nature of the country's legal and political systems, etc., in order to determine what implicit provision in the written constitution would flow inextricably from that spirit. So, uh, so as far as as far as the constitution is clear, nobody can say that uh, it is clear, it is written I in don't English. Is your assumption no, that he doesn't know this? I'm no, coming. No, it, 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 it's my position that he doesn't know this because we wouldn't have stated this on this platform. Are you serious? I'm coming. I'm again, again, in expertise and echo. In expertise and echo. In expertise and echo. The Supreme Court departed from its cardinal principle in the Republic versus Mekankai that when the the, the 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 provision of the constitution is clear the lower courts must enforce it in that in that position when the supreme court determined the qualification of madame zanetto as my rollings and article 94 1e this is what justice uh, uh, uh atuguba retired stated gsc retired stated that the mere fact that the trial high court judge stated that article 94 1a is clear amounts to interpretation of the constitution and that the, the court should have stayed proceedings and referred the question of constitutional interpretation to the Supreme Court. How do we create consensus? Uh, you, have a, coming, you have two minutes. I'm coming. Uh, I'm coming. You see, yeah, you see when, when you said they relied on Article 115 and what, what, what? Article 115 is just for immunity of proceedings in Parliament that whatever you say cannot be used against you in the court of law in terms of defamation and those kind of things. That is that is a privilege of the immunity of parliamentarians on the floor of Parliament. But we are relying on Article 2 and 131 that once rival means were ascribed to it, automatically 132 comes in line because it is only the supreme court that can bring finality to as to what article 97 1 d and 8 means and not any other body whatever mr amaleba is saying is his own interpretation whatever i am saying is my own interpretation it is only the supreme court that can bring finality as to the true meaning of article 97 1 d and 8. roland in the interest of the guardian people I believe that. So it makes Whoever no is wrong. 99. It makes no sense. <laughs> how do we create 99. a concern? Well, you have 99, 99, 99, 99 is that you issue the High Court. You have two minutes. 99, 99 is that. You have two minutes. That is the crux of the matter. No, no, no please, please. Okay. So, yeah, so that please, is, that is what to, how do we create consensus on it? Like, for, for. In the case yes. is vacant because yes. 99 after that, and, and, and all the ones yeah. you have mentioned, why do we create consensus? So, in the interest of the Ghanaian people, Roland, I would have wasted that when the speaker stated that he was going to um, uh, sit back and decide and inform parliament as to his ruling or whatever, he was going in a, he was going to go in accordance with the constitution by referring the question of constitutional interpretation to the Supreme Court. We wouldn't have gotten ourselves in this position. Now, the court has stayed the speaker's ruling. And it is, it is, it is incumbent on all of us to respect the jurisdictions of other constitutional bodies like the Supreme Court for us to proceed. Now, Article 112, 112 uh, 3 has been triggered for the, for, for, for the Speaker to sermon Parliament for consideration of some um, emergency government businesses that are on the table. I believe that the majority minority must come together in the interest of the Ghanaian people. Like Offa rightly mentioned, that the CIA to regulate the conduct of the 2024 elections has already been laid in Parliament. And whatever that is uh, the whatever jostling that is ongoing in on the floor of parliament 
is as a result of the interest in the 2024 elections. People want to use that to communicate clearly to the Ghanaian people what their positions are and what their interests are. And if there is no CI to govern and regulate the conduct of the 2024 elections, where do we go from there? So in the interest of the Ghanaian people, there are urgent matters. We are all, we are all appealing that uh, LI 2462 should be repealed. And, and clearly, government has acceded to our courts and has directed. And now the, the AG and the sector ministers have issued memorandum to parliament to consider in repealing uh, LI 2462. What is parliament doing about it? Is that in the interest of parliament to, to, to ensure that LI 2462, that grant permit for mining companies to mine our forest reserves, be repealed? Is parliament considering other important government business like uh, the 2025 budget statements and those things into consideration and because of all this i believe that they must come together cool heads must prevail on the floor of parliament the uh, peace council must come in the eminent citizens must come in and make sure that at least whoever is wrong is told in the face that you are wrong whoever is right is pronounced to be right so that we move ahead as a, as, as a collective people and push our, push our nation forward All that right. is the only thing if you don't tell the one erring that you are erring mm. clearly we will continue to see what we are seeing today mm. um, solomon also is a member of your this thing right uh, he was saying that um if you look at the individuals who are the players in the story mm -hmm. especially from the ruling party side, etc. They were there in 2020, and you take at the the position there. You look at the position; it looks unprincipled. Um, how do we all come on board to make sure that they also get to see that? Look, we need to convene parliament, and the speaker has a right in the house. I think it's a very straightforward um, situation, unless, of course, you want to double in what I will call the contradiction of sinners, the mischief and all that. I think um, once there's precedence, there's the constitutional, the, the right constitutional um, um, interpretation to this whole matter, um, the, the majority, I should say, the MPP side of parliament should, they, they have the bigger responsibility to make the, the compromise in terms of, you know, um, accepting what has worked for them previously and upholding the current rule and stop all these legal gymnastics going on, the theatrics. Let's, let's begin to, you know, um, like everybody agrees on this table, place Ghana, you know, ahead of all other considerations. We are going into a major election, like I said, and here we are, you know, caught up in all these um, arguments and counter-arguments that essentially r robs us the, of, the, of the, um, the laxity and the, 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 the good opportunity to begin to probe what policies, what proposals are before us going into the election. If I'm voting for Alan, why am I voting for him? If I'm going to vote for the usual John Mahama or Dr. Baumia, why am I voting for him? You see, they are not doing us any good as a people. Now we are caught up in this, these debates, and then there are the sound bites going on. So people so are... So a question. So yeah. how do we all uh, congregate? It's, it's, it's a two-way thing. Like I said, the first responsibility is on the, the NPP. You know, and unfortunately, it doesn't work for them, so it's difficult for them to come to that compromise. Okay. Okay. But we, especially, and th this call goes to the media as well, you have to, um, as it were, set aside some of these, um, these, these conversations. Let's, let's prioritize, you know, the development of this country and the elements that will foster that development we seek. Okay. and discuss them, shine light on them, and that's how we can get people to act in a way that benefits their country. The country. Because, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lord, 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 your conclusion on this matter. This destruction, your, your appeal to everybody. This destruction would not help any part, whether NDC, MPP, 
The ironical thing is that we're going into election to change a government, aren't we? Yeah. Whatever the case is, a new government is going to come in place. If this destruction is not looked at, if this destruction is not sorted, the election might not come on. So what would be, what would be the result for parties who are now vying to, 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 lead, to lead this country in 2024? I want cool heads to roll, if for nothing at all. This is very important. Council of State, the President, the Judiciary, and Parliament, and some chiefs should sit around the table and sort this thing out once and for all. Because it looks as if the leadership in this country, this country is le it doesn't have a leader that can enforce and a leaderless and put his foot down okay. to make sure that we have a consensus because we are going into an election an election that all of us are fighting for to change the government is being threatened so i just appeal and once again look afanya marking when he decided to go to the supreme court did he first of all go and sit with the speaker to find out his decision did he do that i don't think that happened he went straight to the Supreme Court. If you listen to Osei che Chairman Sabunsu and the interview he had on Joy FM, he indicated that the first thing he would have done was to go back to the speaker and know. sit why, with him. Why are you saying that Osei Chairman Sabunsu it, was better no, than... No, no, I'm not... No, so what don't put words in my mouth. It's a question. That is not what I'm saying. Your, your question is putting words in my mouth. No, I'm, that, no, I'm not afraid. I'm just trying to say that Afenyo Markin should have first of all approached the speaker I said, Mr. Speaker, this decision you've made in Parliament, I don't think we agree with it. Let's find a way of what? Sitting and discussing it and coming to some better conclusions. If it so happened that the Speaker at that point declared that I'm not ready to sit with you and talk anything with you, I've made my decision, then he could have then reverted to the Supreme Court. At this point, this delay is not helping anybody. All right. It's not helping the country. It's not helping parliamentarians. It's not helping anybody. Let's find ways of coming to consensus, especially when the CI from the Trump Commission hasn't been late for the election. Well, we have cash out. It goes with the show called Star 439 Hash. And make sure that you choose option eight because we have uh, this is a mega jackpot we're, we're undertaking today. So please make sure that you, as quickly as possible, get on to the Shoku Star 439 ha hash and then increase the number of stakes you have. You have the minimum being 10 and increase as many times as you can because we have 5,000 Ghana cities to give away and you want to enter the weekend solidly behind your own uh, Momo wallet. Because if there's money in it, when you're smiling, you smile uh, to the bank. 5,000 Ghana cities. We want to give it out as quickly as possible. Um, Richmond Roxon is a legal practitioner lawyer. He says, uh, such ingenuity and inconsistency. The language of Article 97G and H are very clear and, un and unambiguous. It deals with the current parliament and all the future. Under Article 97G, the critical element when considering that clause is whether an MP leaving the party of which he was a member at the time of his election. The question is, have these MPs left their parties of which they were selected as MPs or not? The answer is yes. In the case of Honorable Siam, Article 97H is unambiguous. The critical, the critical element here is whether or not an MP who was elected as an independent candidate can join a political party. The answer, again, is no. Immediately, an MP elected as an independent candidate joins a political party, he or she automatically, by all the interpretation, vacates the seat. These MPs have vacated their seats as a result of moving from one party to being independent and independent to joining a party. Even at the worst thing, the MPP in 2020 acted the way they acted because their own constitutions automatically bars the individual who took the position as a member of the party to go independent against the party's own candidate. And that was even buttress with the president even going to Fomena and campaigning against his member of parliament at the time who was 
now going independent in 2020 and so was no more a member of the party. That expels him from the party and as a result of that, he no more holds allegiance to the party and representing them in parliament. All right. I think that it puts matters think, in perspective. But, um, I, I, and then, and, and then let, let's also have this one from um, Kalio Man. It says, by the logic of lawyer Fuakwa, Honorable Isiama gave uh, that uh, that uh, Isiama gave out his right for not challenging his dismissal in court. Why is the individual affected not challenging their dismissal in court, but rather the majority leader? Why is the MPP worried so much more than those affected directly? You can't vacate your seat in the next parliament when it is in the future, and the parliament even hasn't come into existence. No Vacation of your seat means that you are currently uh, occupying that seat and it is occurring today. Now, um, I have this one from Eric Ashalibuchi. The biggest problem we have in Ghana is how the N MPP is going back on its own words. Lack of principles. You say today it is A, tomorrow it is B. BT Sly says, kindly find out from lawyer Maliba what is the Supreme Court seeking to stay when the act has already been executed. That is, the seats are already declared vacant by the Speaker when he sat in his chair and made that declaration. It was life. Should the order not have been issued before the declaration was made? Uh, Sam P. Yali says, it is so shameful that a country like Ghana is being held hostage as a result of a debate about who is in the majority and the minority. The structure of parliament is, uh, is anomalous because of the numbers. All right, the speaker should simply call the MPP the government caucus and the opposition caucus. <laughs> and then we'll go forward. Stop this. <laughs> Majority, minority. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Thank you, gentlemen. No, no, but you gave over to two. You decided to cut me off. What's that? No. You gave over to two. Yeah, you should have given me two. No, no, if not. Oh, really? If not. Oh, okay. But Sorry. let me say something. Okay. <laughs> Hey, I didn't know, I forgot. You see, Afuakwa, <laughs> eh? having had his image battered in this program, oh, mm? let's not go for is it. seeking to, is let's seeking to redeem, let's is seeking to redeem, is seeking to redeem, is seeking to redeem his image. You see, the cases, the cases he cited, no, please. You, 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 you the cases, specifically directed him and you had the chance, so let him, so you give me chance to, yes, no, you directed, you no, 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 you directed me, you directed, you directed to me. Oh, but you said that you were teaching him. Yeah, why? He mentioned that he is teaching me. No, no, I didn't say that, I didn't say that. See, please. So, so, if we, if we so, put the mics off, so, you, you have the floor. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> let's not attack each other. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm just saying that the cases he has cited are irrelevant in this matter. They don't speak to the issues that we right. have talked about. Because the fact that the constitution can be interpreted by anybody, unless, again, unless, the third time, unless there's a rival interpretation, is clear. Don't go there. So don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. It is wrong. It is wrong to say the to say that. You are a law student. Don't go there. I'm a law student. I'm a lawyer like you. Okay. So so a junior. Okay. I'm a lawyer like you. You see, he's focusing on ADR. You see, you see, you see, you see, in his haste to respond to me. All right. He got it wrong. I was talking to him. You got it wrong. You are. You are. You got it wrong. No. What are you doing? No. It's okay. It's okay. I'm saying that. It's okay. I'm saying that you are a law student. So let's day in day out. Don't your lecturers interpret the constitution when you are teaching constitutional law? Don't they teach you? And don't they interpret the constitution? So what kind of convoluted? What kind of convoluted argument are that? Now he wants to go out and people will say that. Oh, am I not? Am I not bloody your nose? They say, oh, one who say my my static case are mano. My static case is bad mano. So you are feeling uncomfortable with the case? Sure. Look. The way to uh, the way forward, the, the, the way forward, the, 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 the way forward in this matter <laughs> is for the MPP to know that they are not the majority, and it is true they are not the majority. We are the majority because the court has stayed. Uh, can you run in this the guy? The court has not ruled on the ah, substantive. No, no, no. They are never, the look, no. under this eighth republic, that keep it as it is. Oh. Under this every public, they are not now, the majority. Kind of is, are, are Can this guy? Does he? Where yes, does he? Where do you? It's coming to a point. Ah, it's coming to. Under a point. this every public, 
Yeah, they are not the majority. The eighth parliament. They are not the majority. We are the majority. Hey, we are the majority. <laughs> we have one three seven. Because, because the rule we have one three seven. Stay. And so what we have is majority caucus. You don't have a majority party. What you have is a majority caucus. Majority grouping. And so when they go to parliament, they should understand that their position is weak, and they are not the majority. The next point is that it is government business they want to conduct. Can they be given the opportunity to have somebody who is called leader of government business to be pushing government business? Oh, but as for majority. as for the majority, the majority that is leader of government. and then they must also remove the matter from court. They must also remove the matter from court because we in the NDC don't trust the Supreme Court and. The so NDC would, would, would always ensure that. that is of business. All right. Um, yes. Abdul Aziz, uh, former member of parliament for Mion, says, Roland, please, a point of correction. The EC, with many publications, and you sent me, says they do not intend to introduce a new CI before the 2024 elections. Yeah, they All right. But we also have a budget to read, right? We need to read the budget, budget to. Yes, so certainly, uh, I think. And um, well, thank you all for joining. Uh, we've had a number of you also on our stream. Let me just read a couple of the messages and quite a very interesting messages coming from. Please make sure you cash out as many times as possible. Uh, intelligence is very expensive. Please. Uh, that's coming from Yemo, Yemole Yemo. Uh, lectures are interpreting laws. What about the Apex Court? That's uh, Yao February. And then also we have Kelvinia Sean. But please make sure you cash out. Step into the world of Dewa 5 at tonight Chop Money for your chance to win big with Dewa Direct and Dewa Chop Money. And then also with Dewa Direct, you dial star 446 hash. You pick the range of the numbers 1 to 39. You also get to win big 20 times your stake, 40 times and 400 times your stake. And you get to win cash every evening at 7 p.m. And then also on su Sundays, it's at 6 p.m. That's where you do the draws. Now, early birds also love Dewa Chop Money at 10 a.m. It's the same procedure. You can also play online. And that is uh, dewa-nla.com. Please. We're taking a break. We'll be back with more.